All right. Hello, everybody on our Balance View page. Hello, everybody in the Bright community who's joined us and the town that is translated to grizzly bears. Hello, Bill. <laughs> Hi, Jürgen. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Now, how is the town pronounced uh, in the native language? Kelowna. Say that one more time. Kelowna. Kelowna. So, and are there still any grizzlies around? Well, you know, it's been heavily populated for some time now, but uh, they're still up in the mountains. Yep. Beautiful. Uh, I'd love to visit there sometime. You sent me a few yeah. pictures some time ago. It looked really beautiful. Now, also for everybody watching today, we'd love to hear where you're from. Type in the chat box so that we that we can see you too here. I'll keep an eye on that. And any questions that you have for Bill and I along the way, just as always, pop them in the comment section and then we'll be happy to share there and go like steer the direction of the conversation a little bit so that we can really include you in the conversation. So, and for the topic of the conversation, we've chosen, uh, just because Bill has such a rich life, we wanted to hear basically more about you, Bill, today and how you have ended your search for peace and fulfillment that from what you shared with me before, it sounds like that was a decade long, pro decades long project. <laughs> so we would just love to hear how that was for you, what happened. And along the way, anybody who is watching this today, just know that the, the reflections you'll hear from Bill, the underlying dynamic of some of the things we'll talk about today is exactly the same whether you live in Grizzly Bear Town or you live in another country or you're young or old, you're a man or a woman. Basically, all humans function, the dynamic that we operate by function in the same way. So we'll reveal some of these things today so that you can see how you can make a similar or the same shift that Bill has made to end this search that we'll talk about today. So. Listen attentively, stay close with us. And if you have any questions, just write them in the chat box. So Bill, um, when and how did you actually find Come Across Balance View and what, uh, where were you at in your search at the time? Well, it, it was an interesting thing. Um, actually, it was uh, through my wife. She, we were living in Canada and, and uh, she went down to San Francisco to um, do some work and happened to um, know that there was a Balanced View meeting in the area when she, while she was there. Uh, she had heard from a friend in Australia that uh, this was a, a very effective program. And uh, so she thought she'd check it out while she was there. And uh, there happened to be a four day introduction occurring while she was there too. So she took that and she came back and told me about this and I thought, well, that's fine. But we had moved to um, where we were living in Canada to be with a spiritual teacher. So I felt like I've got my spiritual teacher and you can do this if you want. And so she was going on clarity calls, what are called you know, weekly calls just to uh, connect with community and, and learn more about Balanced View. And she asked if I wanted to join. And after a few weeks, I thought, well, I could get on a call and I was, quite struck by how simple the format was. And yet it seemed to really um, have some impact. So I kept going on the calls and kind of the less, the rest is history. <laughs> it just kept opening more and more. Um, one of the things that has been a real driving force in my life since I was a child was a sense that there was something really deep and meaningful in life and, mm. and a potential for us to really live um, in in harmony, uh, you know, going back to my, my Christian roots as a child, going to the Unity Church and just wanting to go to church and not really necessarily uh, resonating with uh, the interpretation of the message they were giving, but knowing that there was something there that I mm -hmm. wanted. And so I keep going to church, even though I, I didn't find their answers to my questions satisfying. <laughs> and then uh, when I got into college, when I got away from home and kind of had the freedom to direct my own life, it was just so exhilarating. It's like this whole world was opening up. 
And I had the um, good fortune to have a, an English professor who had changed the curriculum and that the last um, semester was instead of studying like English literature, he had us looking at uh, Eastern literature. And so we were reading Lao Tzu and Confucius and some other things that really had um, really moved me from that kind of Christian concept, trying to pursue this, this quest for meaning and depth in my life from the concept of God and me and getting rid of sin and all of that to this concept of oneness. And I just fell in love with that. Mm -hmm. So that uh, then led me to uh, a meditation practice after years uh, of that uh, led me to uh, searching for other teachers and spent a lot of time with other teachers. And then, like I say, Connie happened to come back with this little gem of, uh, of a training that uh, just kept producing results in my life that the others hadn't. Mm -hmm. So, th but that you really felt, if I, if I get this right, you really felt a deep, both the deep yearning, but also somehow an indwelling confidence that there is something there. You just had to find out like what that is, or you needed an access point, a like a a bridge or a portal or something like that to to really um live or to tap into what you felt was already there for you somehow. Yeah, I actually had experiences. I remember one experience when I was, I don't know, seven or eight years old, you know, and like I say, going to a Christian church and hearing about the second coming of Christ. And I kept wondering, well, what does that really look like? And I remember going home from church one day and it was like this light bulb went on in my head. It's like, I could be that second coming. And it was like, everything just opened up and it was just like, I felt so complete. It was so beautiful. And then my mind kicked in and it went, but you know, that story ends so bad, you know, crucifixion and pain and suffering and all. It's like, I don't think I'll go there. So, I mean, it was, it was so interesting at that age to have like a confirmation of what I had recognized was drawing me to that church and, and, and that um, uh, philosophy. Um, mm -hmm. It was like confirmed. And then later in my life, too, I would have these other moments of confirmation. It's like I knew it was possible to live a sense of peace and uh, like inner completion, wholeness. But I certainly wasn't seeing anybody around me living that way. And uh, so then different things opened up to uh, that, that seemed to hold promise. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I spent a lot of time in those different promises. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, so what was it that you that you didn't find there? Like, because obviously, if you you shared with me in, in our um, quick chat before that you were meditating for 26 years. So um, like diligently, you know, you didn't take you didn't take this matter casually. Um, <laughs> So uh, I know I had a meditation practice for a few months. I did it diligently for up to 10 hours a day because I really wanted to see where it goes. But 26 years, I thought, wow, that is commitment. Um, and um, for a couple hours a day, right? And so um, what was it, even though you did all this, what was it that you were still missing? Like what? What well, kept you going, and also what was it that you that you were missing? Yeah. Um, so then I uh, had the opportunity to to start a meditation practice. It seemed like it would probably, um, uh, possibly give me the what I was looking for. In fact, it came with a promise that in five to eight years of meditating twice a day. Um, there would be this uh, sense of completion I was looking for. And it was a beautiful experience. I mean, there are no regrets. All that time that I spent with it, my life was definitely improved and benefited from it. Um, but it didn't seem to be bringing about this, what I would call, um, I had the sense that there was this possibility for living from this completion that would provide me with kind of a spontaneous right action, what I called spontaneous right action. I would know what to do in any particular circumstance, just from that 
depth of knowing that would be right, be correct, and and not rely on my kind of reason and logic to think things out and do it. It's just like I part of the sense I had was that there was this possibility to live spontaneously. Mm -hmm. So the meditation was great. I mean, I kept meditating, even though I wasn't finding necessarily that spontaneous right action opening in my life. I always felt better after the meditation than before. So I kept meditating, but was always open to maybe, maybe there's something more. Um, And so, you know, the pain of the situation was that I, I knew there was this possibility. The meditation was great for what it was doing. But like my first marriage just ended up, it was a disaster. And uh, Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to deal with um, the feelings that were coming up, the conflicts that existed in the marriage, and was actually encouraged in a way in this meditation community to to not seek help outside the meditation community because it may reflect that meditation doesn't work. You know, meditation is supposed to be the answer to everything. So um, it was really a a sad situation that as beautiful as my experience of meditation was, it wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't finding that those core issues and, you know, stresses within me were were being resolved in a a very Mm -hmm. meaningful way. Mm -hmm. So you had... You had results basically while you were meditating. You felt better during mm-hmm. the process of meditation. Like some people feel great when they're out in nature or, mm-hmm. you know, when we're like immersed in like a hobby that we like or something like that. But then where for you, the, the gap, so to speak, was how do I bring this into a situation like divorce? I know for other people, it could be their health situation. It could be a challenge in career where for many people, like I had glimpses, I I wasn't as successful to always feel peaceful when I was, you know, practicing meditation or things like that. But I definitely had glimpses at least. But then to bring that into a situation where I wanted to like argue with my wife, that was just like, (laughs) you know, there, it, it wasn't even, I didn't even know how that could look like. Yeah. basically yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and so um then uh there just some things occurred meeting different people like i said i was always open for what might be more um than what i was gaining from the meditation and and i was introduced to a teacher that um had quite a different perspective and yet you know when i saw the teacher you know, with the teacher, my meditation teacher, I didn't really spend time with him. He was in Europe and and it was a beautiful kind of relationship, but there wasn't a real uh, closeness there. I was introduced to a teacher where I actually could spend some time. And uh, I recognized in her what I recognized in this other teacher. You know, there was this sense of completion. You know, it's like I could see, you know, she has what I, I'm looking for. <laughs> and so I spent years with her. And then uh, again, um, not really finding those results coming about in my own life. And uh, then uh, found another teacher and that's what moved us to Canada. And again, that same thing um, was a beautiful situation uh, being with the teacher and the community. But when it got right down to like uh, personal um, conflict resolution, uh, there, uh, there weren't the tools that somehow, in, in fact, when we first moved to uh, Canada to be with this teacher, we were living in a communal house and, you know, there's a lot that happens in a communal house. So we thought it would be a good idea to uh, have a weekly meeting, you know, and with all of us kind of being on the same page about peace and harmony and, and, and spiritual principles we should be able to deal with any of our, our issues. And it was so amazing to see how difficult it was for us mm-hmm. to resolve the simplest things about like how to share the refrigerator. And at times these meetings would end up in shouting matches where the different people were actually, you know, using the language and the concepts of the spiritual teaching to defend and justify how their point of view was the one that, we should all adopt. And so uh, 
again, it was so obvious that as beautiful as the philosophy was, um, it I, I couldn't find a way, and, and, and you know, a lot of others, the people that we were living with in this house, you know, we weren't finding how to apply these principles to the day-to-day, face-to-face kinds of things that come up when, you know, we need to work together. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when uh, I started getting involved in Balanced View, that was the big difference. It was like there were instructions on how to deal with these day-to-day conflicts that come up. And, oh, my gosh, but, you know, it just... I just had to let everything else go. <laughs> just, you know, it seemed to hold what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, but just to make sure that I understand that right. So you actually moved to another location initially to actually be in the vicinity of a teacher and a community. So you really gave this, again, just like with the meditation, you, you gave this a lot of commitment. You know, oh, you, yeah. you, you really, you, you really, this was really important to you. And so um, when you then came across Balanced View through your wife, like you said, you had like, you first thought, nay, <laughs> not interested. And then, and then you dipped your toe into it a bit. Um, what were some of the first like things that struck you or that, you know, that, that you found, I don't know, interesting or compelling enough to even come back, you know, because if, if you didn't show up with super interest in the beginning, then what was it that you thought, hmm, you know, I, I look a little more there. Yeah, I, I, it, it was interesting because I heard Connie, you know, on these calls, they were telephone calls, conference calls, and she'd have it on speakerphone. So I would hear it while I was doing other things. And I just thought the format and what they were doing was awfully uh, rudimentary, just so simple. And here I was all these years of meditation and all of that, you know, I, I needed something deep. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you know, she just asked a few more times, you want to get on the calls. So it's when I got on the call and actually participated in that simple format that after the call, I kind of still had the same thought. That's awfully simple, but there was a, um, what? There was just such a, a lovely warmth and mm. um, uh, clarity and ease. And I thought, gee, how, how could that happen from such a simple format? You know, I, I, you know, I'd spend an hour in meditation, you know, and come out of meditation feeling kind of rested and at ease, you know. And, and here was this active, you know, we were active in uh, this in this uh, conference call and here was this beautiful ease and openness. And so um, in, in one respect, it was a very small thing, but when I look back on it, I mean, there, there was a purity in that that um, was undeniable. Mm. So, you know, kept going on calls and then wanting to get more involved in the different uh, ways that Balance View offers to um, participate more. Mm-hmm. But so, the format or the way of interacting actually then was perfect for you because you could see those qualities that you were looking for already in that meeting itself so that it wasn't something that was only when you were by yourself or when you were practicing or when you were in like that moment of stillness but that it sounds like that integration piece that you were missing before already happened just by the way that you were involved because you felt these qualities directly in the situation. Yeah. And, and that's what, uh, you know, so, so there was the interaction on the, on these calls, but then as I got more involved and, and took some of the other uh, trainings that have been offered, um, then, you know, the day to day stuff that would come up, you know, um, I'll tell you a story. I don't think I've told you this one. Uh, <laughs> um, so my first, like I said, my first uh, marriage ended in a disaster. I was completely blindsided when my wife basically said, you know, this isn't working. It's like, well, I know there's some issues. Everyone has issues. What isn't working? You know, and, 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 and there was no way to, neither of us could find a way through it. So then I was very uh, skeptical about getting involved in another uh relationship until I felt like I had the tools to mm-hmm. deal with whatever didn't work the first time. So Connie and I lived together, I think, for seven years before we got married. 
was it so no maybe five whatever because we kept taking workshops and doing uh 12 step work and all kinds of things to to try and make sure we had the right foundation to really get married and um so uh we got married <laughs> and what was interesting is on about a six month cycle she would almost I mean, she would actually literally sometimes grab me by my shirt collar and shake me and say, where are you? And what was occurring in our relationship is what had occurred in my first marriage is that when things would happen that I didn't really agree with and I didn't know how to address, I would just kind of stuff it. I just kind of put it under the rug. And in doing that, I would withdraw a bit. And then mm -hmm. Something else would come and I would withdraw more and more. Now, fortunately, you know, Connie, unlike my first wife, would confront it. You know, she just wouldn't tolerate having a partner that was <laughs> going farther and farther away. So, like, you know, a good, you know, just just in response to that, I would get present again. <laughs> you know, and we'd have some relationship, but then again, it, I'd, I'd go through my thing because I hadn't found a way to deal with um, things that uh, weren't mm -hmm. working for me in the relationship. And so my MO was to withdraw. So then when we um, started Balanced View, it was so interesting because uh, then I had some instructions on how to deal with um, what I used to withdraw about. Mm -hmm. And so, oh my gosh, what a difference that made. Um, then instead of when things came up that were an issue for me, instead of stuffing it, um, yeah, I was able to, uh, one of the phrases that I, I, I liked about balance view, there's a phrase called extracting the power from this negative experience. You know, when there's a negative experience in my life, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. You know, all of that energy of that experience isn't necessarily negative, even though the circumstances look that way. So I'll give you an example. Um, Connie really likes a clean and tidy house. And so um, she wanted to keep it cleaner than I tended to find enjoyable to do. <laughs> and so there was always a resistance about that. And I mean, yeah, I'd get triggered time and time again about cleaning the house and keeping the sink clean and da, da, da. And so one day we're going through it again and all this resistance came up. But now I had this simple instruction from Balance View that shifted that experience from being one of total uh, and, and, and resistance and doing the job, but with total resistance to it just opening up and all of that energy of the resistance, it just completely flipped. And it's like, I wanted to clean the house. It was <laughs> such a, I had all this energy to clean the house. And, you know, that was like, in a way, small thing, but that was like a miracle. Mm -hmm. A miracle because what I used to habitually um, just, you know, hate in my life had turned into this complete flow of, you want to call it beneficial energy or something. Mm -hmm. that, you know, got the house clean, but that wasn't the, the best part of it. It was I was becoming free of that uh, old cycle of when things come up that are negative in my life, I have a way to um, not only shift it, but actually create something beneficial out of it. Now mm -hmm. that, that kept me coming back for more. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Wow. So, and, and it sounds like that was effortless. I mean, you didn't oh. have to like, you know, beat yourself into submission to then, you know, like stop resisting and 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 arguing within yourself. It was just like the insight and the 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 simple practice that helped you to like release all that all that struggle basically, all that like inner struggle that went on with you. And it doesn't surprise me that that also then had this impact on your relationship because mm -hmm. you found that peace within yourself and then it's like you can't really 
like get into these ridiculous arguments, which I think everybody, at least I could so relate to what you were sharing, not with the same example and the same roles, but I can exactly relate to what, you know, that energy that comes up, which is especially painful with people we love, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. th there you are, you're married, you love each other, but then these like tiny things come up that you, you know, and you know, they're like, small things but you still get so upset and enraptured and yeah it's so beautiful to hear how how that shifted for you so these things were what made you come back and and check it out more because you saw the actual results of the philosophy the teachings the practice the community basically come about in your own life which is exactly what you were missing before where yeah. the results were more like isolated in the practice and weren't coming into the relationships, weren't coming so much into the, the flow of everyday life. Um, so after this initial period of trying, um, you were on some calls, you said, like clarity calls. And then what was, what was the next steps that you've t taken? From there. Well, like I said, uh, you know, things were beginning to occur where, where I was able to apply this teaching and seeing the results I was looking for. In fact, I hadn't really thought about this before until right now, kind of connecting these dots. But that experience with the cleaning, you know, and reversing the, the resistance to openness, you know, that was that spontaneous right action that I knew was possible. If I would just be in the moment and address that moment instead of all this history of I don't like to clean and da 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 da, da you know, I, you know that, that was so I was having these results, you know, actually seeing what I was I was looking for. So I wanted to um, see more, and, and and community has always been important to me. So we decided to uh, there there was an opportunity to go to India um, where there would be a number of people uh, gathering to do some of the balanced view teachings, and so we went to India for a month. <coughs> And it was great because there was a teaching every morning, uh, five days a week, I think it was. And um, it was beautiful because it was the first experience that I had where uh, there were, you know, how many, 60 to 100 people coming together, uh, kind of practicing the same thing of, you know, how to resolve conflict in, in you know, the day-to-day -day stuff. And it was phenomenal. It was like magical um, to me there. It's like that whole month we were there, it's like we would wake up every morning. It's just like, I, we felt, I, I felt like I have to pinch myself. Is this real? Because it seems so utopian, um, just how helpful and beneficial and effortless everything occurred. I mean, so much got done. And yet uh, it didn't go through. So the, the kind of politics that so often accompany uh, groups in getting things done, you know, you can have the best principles and philosophies and purposes, you know, but when it gets down to the day to day of how do we clean the toilets, um, then stuff comes up. And it was so amazing to see that in this group, uh, we all had this, uh, is the skill to deal with our own stuff when it came up. So in a way, it, it's so beautiful because this simple uh, practice um, kind of takes the victimhood out of my circumstances. It's like if I've got to clean the toilets and I don't want to, with the skill that I've you know learned from this teaching, then um, it's like um, – I don't have to be a victim of this, just like I didn't have to be a victim of the cleaning the house anymore. So I guess that's one of the big things that occurred. And boy, to, to be in a community where people aren't victimized by circumstances, but instead just moving forward, finding solutions, and it's like, wow, it was magical. So that was the next step. And that was, uh, that was a real clincher. <laughs> Wow. Was that where you did the 12 empowerments? No, we had actually done the 12 empowerments uh, on the phone while we were in Canada. Uh, let's see, a few months before we went to India. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, how was how was that for you? To, so India was where you could see the teachings in action, 
I can tell also like it was impressive to see such a large group really work together harmoniously. And you said you were like everybody was practicing the teachings. And so what was it, for example, in the 12 empowerments in that foundational training and balanced view that you'd learned there that you could see you could apply directly, uh, whether it was about cleaning toilets or being together in other circumstances in in uh, in India? or in your everyday life? Yeah, well, what comes to my mind when you mention the 12 empowerments was just, well, it's a good term, empowerments. I felt so much more empowered to relate well with whoever or whatever I had to relate with. Um, it was an amazingly powerful training. I mean, we did all the big workshops that are out there for transformation and self-empowerment, you know, in our quest to make sure that we had the skills to <laughs> hold a marriage together. And, you know, they gave some amazing techniques um, on dealing with issues that came up in your life, but it, it never really stuck for me. You know, it was like I was always having to, oh, this is an issue. So what's the technique that I apply here? And it was also mental and it, I just really couldn't do it. It just never really worked. Whereas with the training, the 12 empowerments training, again, it was just applying this, this skill. I guess what it is is that instead of looking back, what's the technique to deal with this, you know, that I've learned in my past, that this balanced view training just um, allows me to uh, almost instantly clean the windshield so that I see things so much more for how they really are. And then I can respond from that instead of, you know, whatever baggage I might be bringing into the situation. Or, um, yeah, it, it, the empowerments gave me the skill to uh, really um, relate. I don't know, what do you want to say? More in the here and now? I guess more in, you know, that earlier term, relate from a spontaneous right action. It, it allows me to clear the the windshield. And what I've realized is that what what has always kind of bugged up the windshield, you know, all this stuff that makes it so hard for me to, had made it so hard for me to really see what was going on and respond well and spontaneously in a beneficial way, were all the stories I had that were going on. So a story about cleaning a house or cleaning a toilet or about, this person's behavior or that person's um, looks, even whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I'd have this story and that story would be just like a big bug on my windshield so that I really couldn't see clearly what was going on. With the empowerments, there's a lot of emphasis on how to resolve uh, relationships, really find harmony and, and resolution in, in all my relationships. And so it's like, uh, that skill came to just wipe the bugs off the windshield. <laughs> and so, wow, what a powerful uh, mm. shift that was. Mm -hmm. And so that stuck with you, those, like these, the, the process of the empowerments was that you could then apply, whether it was in your personal life with your wife, or also then when you were with, with the group of people where you could see if everybody, um, you know, coming together, has that perspective and has that that skill set you mentioned it's like a skill um then then there there are the results that you had been looking for before yeah and i, I don't want to make it sound like you know i i've got this perfected stuff still comes <laughs> up in my life you know i still get triggered but oh I, you know something happened just uh just last night and, and it was so interesting how this old trigger came up and yet, as, as, as much as the story kind of was starting to fill my mind, I just saw how it, it couldn't take hold anymore. So that's what's been interesting, too, is how um, as I continue to just rely on, you know, what I've learned here with, with Balanced View, it's not that triggers don't come up and I can't, you know, kind of get distracted by, you know, an old story or belief or whatever. Um, but it's so diminished, which is such an, you know, I mean, that 
level of, I guess I would call it, yeah, you know, I guess I would call it freedom in my life, freedom mm -hmm. from the oppression, you know. And in a way, it's it, looking at it, it was my own oppression. It's like I was oppressing myself with all these stories, and yet all these stories were my attempt to just find safety and comfort in my life. It, 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 it's so crazy how dysfunctional I could become out of an attempt to just really you know, be comfortable and safe and loved and. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and all the things that I ever wanted. <laughs> well, I can completely relate, and I think everybody can. That was so beautifully put, because, you know, that that dynamic that we're actually only trying to be free and to be at peace and to, to make it work, basically, um, mm -hmm. with all these crazy tools, because we don't know any other way, I think everybody has been in that. I don't know anybody who hasn't had mm -hmm. these, you know, like what you just called dysfunctional, because that's really what it is. Even if we have a functioning, like my life was quite good on the outside when I when I uh, met Candace and came across Balanced View, but the inner, like that, that mm -hmm. barrage of stuff um, that I constantly had to deal with to keep up on the outside, um, and even on the inside, it was just really painful. And it's just from what you what you were sharing, it's beautiful to see that um, a big topic that we have, um, especially for people who have been seeking a lot, is to see that that freedom that you've just mentioned no longer depends on circumstances. Mm -hmm. So you you have access to that same freedom either through the practice or spontaneously, which it sounds like for you, there is now a spontaneous, even when there is things coming up, you spontaneously know without even applying anything, you just know that this is going to resolve. And even though you don't feel like all cheerful all day long, but mm -hmm. there is this innate confidence now that you know this isn't something you need to get all upset and twisted up about. Um, so, there is freedom and there is peace and that fulfillment regardless of circumstances, which then gives you access to the, to that right action that you mentioned before, because you're no longer distracted by, by all the stuff that comes up that you otherwise would always have to sort out first and dig through and analyze and find the right tool for it and so forth. And now you only, there's only the clarity, the, the clear seeing of of what will support you and and the situation so that's really powerful when 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 did you do the 12 empowerments when and go to india that story that you shared just so that we have a time context how long ago oh, yeah. was that good so um so i did my introduction to balance view i think it was june of 2012 we did the empowerments august september 2012 we went to india in January of 2013, and then on to Sweden. I mean, that's a whole other <laughs> community yeah. experience. It's a beautiful center in Sweden that we went to for the spring and summer gatherings that year of 2013. We continued to go on from that. So yeah, it's been a sort of 13, 18, so uh, five years. Mm, powerful. And um, I see we're coming, we're already a bit behind no. our time. I knew that would happen because you, I, I could just listen to your life. It's so rich to hear, to hear about that. But uh, if there is any, um, do you have any tip, any, anything, if anybody here is interested, is there anything like any good recommendation from somebody who's been practicing this for a few years and, you know, has put it to the test, anything that you'd like to give our friends on their way? Hmm. Well, what came to my mind just uh, that last share was how I, I, how I recognized that every moment in my life it has always been a choice, a choice either to, uh, you know, go down uh, the beneficial method or hold on to some old past thing and get and spin the wheel, that old hamster wheel. And uh, how effective um, this, this teaching uh, from Balanced View has uh, supported me to to make that choice and that spontaneous right action that I was always looking for um, 
it, it's, it's so beautiful because in balanced view, it doesn't take my choices away. I, can, I still have that full array of choice to do whatever I want. But more and more in the same way as like, you know, with the cleaning thing or last night, the old getting triggered in a way and, and, and not being able to get gripped in the same way. More and more, it becomes an old phrase from some of the old spiritual teachings of the choiceless choice. It's almost like, um, even though I still feel like I have a complete array of choice, I can do anything at any moment in my life still. More and more, that um, spontaneous right action or that beneficial action is just the obvious thing to do. It's like if I am outside and I watch a, fa a child fall, I don't even think about it. I just want to go help that child. You know, it's like this mm -hmm. choiceless choice. Isn't there just this innate, uh, desire to be helpful. And, uh, so yeah, that I guess is the, the thing that I love about balanced view is I, I don't feel like I'm like living a rigorous, this is the balanced view way of doing things. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm completely at choice, but the more I'm involved in balanced view, the more, um, that, uh, that, Choiceless choice or beneficial choice is just the obvious thing to do. And that's the life I've always wanted to live. So. Oh, <laughs> that is so beautiful. So beautiful, Bill. Thank you so much for sharing so beautifully from your heart, from your life. It's just, I love knowing you and hearing your stories and, and your insights and you're just so precious and inspiring to hear how you how you found what you knew in your heart you would find. You know, isn't this amazing? I mean, <laughs> you, knew, you knew it as a child and, and here we are with childlike wonder. Uh, <laughs> and uh, friends who are watching, um, if you're newer to what we're doing here, we will post a link to a free training that goes through some of the things we've covered today and many more. We go through five steps um, that support you completely in living a life that is free from suffering, finding inner peace and a life of real fulfillment. So we'll post a link to this free training if, if you haven't gone through that in the post section of the, of this video, of this interview here. And also if you've been around for some time and you wonder what your next steps could be, Mia and I are offering what we call breakthrough sessions, breakthrough calls on which we basically just really listen deeply to your life and to your experience. We look at where you're at today, what's working, what's not working, and then where you want to go. And then we want to look together how you can come from here to where you want to be. We've seen so many people in all kinds of different circumstances and we just can't help ourselves to support other people. These calls are actually free. And uh, we just love to meet you, get our heads together, get our hearts together, see what's helpful. And um, if there is anything that you can find in Balanced View, great, we'll share about that. If there is something that we think could work better than what we do, we'll share about that too. Mm -hmm. So we really just want to make sure that you get clarity on those calls and what exactly will bring you closer and actually into a life of peace, freedom and fulfillment. So um, we post that link as well for this, for those free breakthrough sessions. And we can't wait to be with you either in the free training on the breakthrough sessions or in the bright group. All right. And Bill, thank you again so much. Beautiful to be together. And um, let's have part two at some point. This is just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Always good to be with you, Jochen. Thank you so Beautiful. much. Thank you, friends. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Mm.